Hi everyone, my name is Kyle. Welcome to the channel. We're gonna go to a friend's house. He's got a bunch of old stuff for me. A bunch of lawn mowers and a really old silver craftsman. He's got a snow blower that's good. Um, either way, I think this hoard is gonna provide a bunch of content. So let's see what we can pull out of an old barn. I just broke that. Yep. All right. So there's a sleigh here. I'm not getting that. Ooh, lots of spider webs. Lots of spider webs. And a spider. All right. Let's see if we can kick them out of the way. Sorry guys, what can you see? All right, we got a Eager One, six horsepower. Looks like a front self propel. Uh, can't really tell, a Craftsman. Both of them have the big rear tires and then there you go. There's the Craftsman uh, five speed, 36 inch deck. The gold series. Yeah, and then there's a weed whacker. So I don't think I'm going to be able to fit this tractor today. Unlikely. But let's see what we can get access to here. Could definitely get these lawnmowers out today. I'm going to start, start pulling some stuff out. Alright, these doors, they both slide. Pretty nice. So now you got access to glass. all the stuff here. Pretty big motor. Not bad. Ooh. Handle is a, a bit busted there. It's got a Honda engine on it. It's another front self propel. Just a, a bit broken right there. Okay, this is probably what you really want to see more of. Just first glance, the deck doesn't look all rotted out. A lot of good surface rust. Flat tires. Bunch of bolts. No battery. The deck is all jacked up on that side. Looks like it's sitting on a pile of. Oh, it's a plow. Huh. That's a plow to something. Not to a craftsman, that's for sure. All right, what do we got? Oh, -ho. Look at that little engine. 12 and a half horsepower. Briggs Gold Series. That thing looks tiny in there. I don't know why that one looks so weird. I've seen plenty of uh, 12 horsepower, 12 and a half. These, oh, this is overhead valves. That's why. It's an OHV. I don't know if I've seen those before. I'm used to the flathead version. Pretty interesting. It's got a, a grass shield over that, so I can't even spin it over. But, uh, you know what I want to know? I want to know if the headlight lens is there. Let's look around. Oh, yeah. 
That hood's in good shape. This thing would be fun to restore, huh? Probably do more than restore, like paint the whole thing, make it look nicer than it should type of thing. <laughs> Throttle cable moves. That doesn't move. All right, just for the fun of it, like I said, I'm not going to take this home today, but uh, maybe we'll see if some of these tires take air. took air no problem that's pretty good That one's not taking any air. Well, maybe it is. Yeah, I was wrong. That took air. Let's see if we can scoot this thing. A little this way I can get better access. I don't have to, you know, purposely stand in front of all those spider nests. Well, all the tires took air and they look like they're holding air too. That one even had some air in it. So I might be changing my plan here because it looks like this thing's going to roll pretty easy. Well, let's see if I can get it past the sled. That might be the hard part. I'll probably scoot it over a little. But uh, this thing is rolling pretty good. I wonder if I reorganize my trailer. I could get this uh, Craftsman up on here. Put one or two of those in the back. Because the thing is there's a snow blower too. So I didn't bring my big trailer. This weed whacker has no head. Well I gotta take it anyway because he said take it all. <laughs> Alright let's see what we could do starting to feel like we can get this all. Well, we got it and I'm huffing and puffing probably doesn't look like it but it's about 90 degrees which for uh, Labor Day in Connecticut is pretty hot and it's humid she has a belt does it have a drive belt you tell me I can't see all right cool What do you think? You think this will clean up good? I think it might. All right, let's uh, get this closed up. I'll tell him that I broke his lock. <laughs> Looks like I'm not the first person to break something here, but anyway. Yeah, that plow definitely doesn't go to this craftsman. I mean, look how long you know what? Maybe it does. I'll ask him about that. I kind of doubt it. This is really heavy duty, but we'll see. Any other machines in here? I don't think so. All right. 
You guys like spiders? There's a lot of them in here. Here's the snowblower. Five horsepower simplicity. Not in bad shape. Uh, I know this thing runs. I serviced this for him a couple years ago. So yeah, he just he doesn't need this anymore, so this is why he's giving it to me. Alright, we're gonna put it up behind the tractor here and then figure out what to do with that mower, whether I can fit it in the back or tuck it in here somewhere. And then I think we got it all. Pretty good stuff. Well, I wasn't prepared for this, but we got it. Two lawn mowers, a weed whacker, a craftsman two, and a simplicity snowblower. Not bad. Rusty and crusty free haul. But I bet you this thing runs. I know that thing runs. And uh, these, you know, who knows? Really, I mean, that Honda engine might be good on something else. But uh, nothing too special there, but we'll see what we can do. Well, we got it home. Here's a good look. I almost forgot these are LT4000s. <laughs> I really haven't had one of these in a while. Um, they're, some people call these the best tractors Craftsman made. Um, yeah, I mean, kind of. They're, they're cool. <laughs> but uh, I think they don't cut as good as even the newer ones. But um, there's some cool stuff about them. They're definitely well built. And they're still like cheap and you know they're meant to be affordable, but they built them pretty well. And I mean, as you can tell, like things are holding up on it. It's like really solid metal, it feels just way different than the stuff you get now. Even the tires are much better condition and are much better quality than they sell now. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty interesting to get this to run, but man, there's nothing cracked on this hood. That hood is perfect condition. But uh, yeah, I was wondering what was gonna be the star of the show from this haul that I got, and I think this is gonna be it, definitely. And even though, you know, the value of these is not too high, <laughs> I think I'm gonna make a similar video to uh, that 1991 MTD that I made and uh, we'll probably do the same thing with this thing take it all apart get all the metal cleaned up paint it paint the frame you know maybe we'll talk about putting new tires on this they're overall really good shape but the rear ones are dry rotted but uh yeah this imagine this thing all painted up I think it's gonna look pretty sweet See if we can get that seat to kind of come back to shape there. Oh yeah, little little holes there, but not bad. And those seats, you can find those seats, so I might be able to find a replacement. <clears throat> Looks like there's a big sticker over top of this. Some of those decals might go away. But uh, all this looks pretty good. And I actually think I have another hood just like this, but uh, that one looks like it's going to be easy enough to save. And I think that deck is going to clean up just fine. And this thing is in really good shape. Alright, uh, let's just spray a little carb spray in there and just see what happens, right? Gotta see if it turns over. That's bone dry. That is good. Got the air cleaner off, and this thing looks brand new, too. Like, oh, maybe not. No, it's pretty dirty. But this this screen was in good shape. Usually those fall apart, but this is, like, not quite the same cheap foam that you see now. Pretty interesting intake. Can't say I've seen that before. I have not worked on one of these engines, so... I mean, not like they're too crazy, right? This screen, I'm wondering if it kept out the mice, but I guess they could have gotten... Oh, well, this cover was on. Yeah. Well, maybe the mouse were kept out of here. We're going to find out, right? Oh, 
clicking. Wonder if we should take the engine cover off. Just see if the mice have bound that up. That they have. Oh yeah, that's some good stuff. Yeah, I'd say that starter was bound up, huh? This is not even new. Oh, oh the coil wire's done. <laughs> Completely chewed through. All right, well, that'll stop us right there. Uh, I kind of doubt I have really the right coil for that. Such a weird size engine. I mean, maybe. I have a bunch of coils, but... <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll just throw on a mask and blow some of that off and see if there's any other parts I need to buy. I don't think we're going to be trying this today. couple days later here and we're already up to some funny business off camera here's the coil chewed through like I showed you before but I couldn't get this bolt out so I had to cut that off and now we're left with just the threaded piece and get some vice grips on here and I'm just hoping that this thing it already seems like it's gonna turn oh yeah it's actually already turning so, what I really wanted to prevent was, you know, breaking anything here, but this is coming out by hand. I don't know why that would not, must have been seized to the coil, but it wasn't seized in here, so that's good. Because if you break these, uh, you're kind of out of luck. Really hard to figure something out. You know, you could try to just put the coil on with one post, but that's not a good idea. Especially if you're selling it to somebody, so. Alright. We have a new coil here, just came in the mail, so that's why I'm working on this. So, we're gonna put this on, hook it up, and we'll try this engine, see if we can get it to fire. Nothing goes easy, but I had to modify the holes on this because, you know, this cheap knockoff coil uh, was rubbing up against the magnet so I finally got that sorted out and surprisingly it still has spark so here's the spark plug here just resting on the starter but I'll bump the key the engine spins over and you'll see some spark that's got really good spark haven't been able to get it to fire though so I'll give it one more try we'll see if we can get this thing to pop off but seems like it'll go Just leaking right out of the carb already but see what we can do nice if it gave me one pop right just one yell at me about the starter well, you know what am I supposed to do here <laughs> well uh, I got a thunderstorm rolling in so I'm probably gonna stop here but I have spark I mean I can hear compression oh yeah I got compression 
All right, so we're just not getting that fuel to go up this intake. You know, as you can see, it's leaking out. So I think we're into the carb, everybody. Here's the carburetor off that Tecumseh engine, and uh, it stinks. <laughs> it really smells like really old fuel. So I'm kind of excited for you guys to see what this looks like on the inside. Even unthreading this, it just feels really gummy. Yeah, all sticky. Probably should be wearing gloves. Okay. There you go. It's <laughs> so foul. It almost looks like the needle is not stuck. Wow. Look at that. The needle came right out. Ooh, the this part is all it's all rusted. I gotta find a new way to hang the needle. Oof. Oh, it's filled. Completely filled with fluid. Alright, be curious to see if I have another float, but we might be uh well, we might need to either get a new carb or try to rebuild this one. Surprisingly, that looks great. Yeah, just really nasty. I'll get you a closer look. Yeah, just really stinky stuff. Okay, this would probably benefit from the ultrasonic, but uh, let me see if I can find a new float. I was just working on a Tecumseh from a snowblower. I'm curious, uh, the float looks very similar, so let me see if I can dig that up. I had a couple carburetors here, so this one uh, looked like it might be good, although it does have a big blob of solder. If you can shake it, there's something in there, so that's not ideal. And then this carburetor was pretty clean on the inside. It's got a nice looking float. No problems, and a really clean needle, and the little pin hanger. So we might have everything we need to rebuild this. Just really needs a clean, doesn't it? We have things pretty cleaned up here. So just did a lot of scrubbing and scraping, hodgepodging some parts here. This is a different bowl. Well, it's already a different float and needle, so you know. But uh, I think we have enough to put this back together. It might need more cleaning, but I think I'm going to throw it on the machine and see if it starts. The carb is back on and I have a little bit of new fuel line mocked up here and shut off and uh, I sprayed a little carb spray and it's leaking out of this joint but that, that's just air intake. I'll show you so you can see it immediately starts leaking from there so I'll have to get into that at some point but so far the carb isn't leaking, so I think we're good to try this. Got the battery pack hooked up, Get the choke all the way up, we got our key over here, let's see what happens. Take the choke off. Again, nothing. Mm. That should do it. Mm. 
not a single pop. I mean, it feels like we have compression. We saw a spark. Fuel should be better. I always think about timing. It does, yeah, it does have pretty good compression right there. Hmm. Let's just try again. starter doing fine hmm kind of want to check spark again let's try again for spark that's yeah, kind of weak but I do I do see it Doesn't look terrible. I can get in a better spot. And I'm seeing spark. Here, see if you can see it jumping. Hopefully you can see that, but that's pretty convincing to me. That's some pretty good spark. Okay, we got the hood off on this because my diagnosis after watching the video of what I've recorded so far is that I need to check the valves. So. I'm noticing on the video, of course, spark. You know, I'm watching myself turn the engine over. I'm seeing compression, but I'm not seeing enough compression. It kind of looks to me like I'm getting compression only out of one valve, you know? So I'm doing a lot of turning from what you've seen before uh, you notice anything feeling like it has compression. So I bet I have a valve that's hung up and that would explain why I'm not getting it to fire at all. Some things I've done off camera, let's see if I can get this cover off, is I've tried, um, I've removed the intake completely and sprayed some carb spray down in there and nothing, still won't fire. So, you know, one of the thoughts I had was I was just not getting any fuel or carb spray to go up that big long intake, but that's not the case. I sprayed it right down its gullet. So, Yeah, let's crack into that and uh, take a look to see if we have a stuck valve. Everything is there. Let's see what happens as we spin the engine. Okay, not what I was expecting. Nothing's hung up. It might need an extreme adjustment. We'll find out here, but things are moving. Everything looks pretty good in there too. All right, let me uh, get both hands. Let me get both hands on there and uh, see if I can figure this out. Well, I made a little adjustment on uh, what looks like the exhaust valve. Um, I don't know, I've never adjusted Tecumseh valves like this, so this is kind of unfamiliar to me, but seemed like, yeah, I think we got better compression now. Seem, seemed like the exhaust valve was pretty tight, so I backed it off a little bit, and already I can feel, eh, I do feel a little bit better compression, but I don't know. 
Yeah, I can see that little, there's a compression release bump in there, so I'm battling that too, but I don't know, gotta try it I suppose, see if that makes a difference. Okay, let's give this another try. Do smell some fuel, but uh, I think I'm gonna spray some carb spray in there. Well, actually, it looks like we're flooding now. That's a pretty gross looking fuel coming out of there. Maybe I don't need carb spray though. Let's let's try it again. I might be seeing some smoke. Give me something. There we go. <laughs> We've been waiting for that one pop, huh? Nice. All right, now it wants to go, right? Doesn't seem to want choke. I'm going to do idle. Right, we'll just do full throttle. We'll figure out what she wants. She wants carb spray. Well, you heard it. <laughs> I think we're on to something with that valve adjustment. Uh, it just does not seem like it's getting fuel, though. Man, this is this is like so close. You just want to keep going, right? Just really give it a bunch. Huh. I don't know. Guess I'm gonna scratch my head some more. Alright, got a little bit of a better battery in there. Let's see if something happens. So, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like it has good enough compression. I'm not really sure what's going on there. It's not real strong. Probably back off on those valves a little bit more. Tighten things up. That one seems to hit, but I don't know. Maybe I'll do a valves with uh, just doing it by hand, like not even checking the gauges, just the old school way, right? The way the old timers do it. I don't know. Okay, valves are adjusted again. I have much better compression. I really backed off on them, you know, more than you would measure. So might be doing some extreme things here, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can tell by the way it hit, that's much more compression. wrong with this thing huh timing we gotta look at timing huh see if there's sheared flywheel key that's well, gonna be hard for you to see in there with the GoPro it's not gonna focus but I see a shiny key in there so everything looks fine I don't think we have a sheared key there so, all right, one other thing I've learned is I did buy the wrong coil. I mean, obviously I had to modify it, like I said, so that couldn't have been right. Um, I, yeah, I, I bought the wrong coil for the wrong engine, so I could go and get the right coil, but I just, I don't know, I don't believe that yet because I'm seeing spark. I know it probably could look better, and I watched the video too. The spark looked way better in person than it did on the video. So, just don't know here. What else could be going on? The exhaust could be clogged. Yeah, I just don't really know. Right, so I cracked open the intake again. And this is where the fuel would go, right? So, you think that would do something. It's, it's got to be spark, right? I'm going crazy. Gotta be spark related. I can open the spark plug hole and put some uh, starter fluid in there too. There's like one little backfire there. <sighs> Alright, I have a, a new spark plug on there, but. I turned the lights off for the most part. Let's see if we see spark. It really does look great to me. Looks even bluer with that new spark plug, so maybe I'll spray some fluid in the spark plug hole, see if it fires off. Try again. Well, it might have been the spark plug. Oh, I had the fuel off. Not this whole time, but I had the fuel off just now. Because I noticed it dripping. Okay. Uh, so that was obviously very successful. Let's hope for a repeat performance, right? See what happens here. Let's try with choke. It's just not getting fuel.
whoa, whoa, whoa. What? <laughs> Something on the mufflers going on there. Oh, that sounds horrible. <laughs> I'm always nervous of a shed fire. I might roll this thing out. Try that again. Well, what do you think, guys? <laughs> it does run. All right, let's let's roll this out and try again. All right, let's try this outside. Too much oil. Oh, spewing out. Why? Is that gasket that bad? We got fuel dripping, we got oil spewing. Really bad. Ooh. Let me see if I can tighten down that valve cover. Oh, that oil is dripping. Pretty big mess, huh? Right yep. on the grass. I gotta do something. All right. See well, I gotta quit for the day, but uh, I got it back in the shed, tilted back. Hopefully, that will stop this oil leak. Something's wrong with that gasket, which looked in great shape, by the way. It's this really cool, thick piece of rubber that goes around, and yep, I guess that needs to be replaced. Uh, it's, it seems like it's got hope. Uh, it just isn't running right. The carb isn't doing a great job. Probably needs a new carb, so maybe I'll look for a gasket and a carb. And uh, yeah, I think we figured out the valve adjustment, so I think that's pretty good. And obviously, the spark plug was a big deal, so yeah, sometimes it really is those simple things. Usually, it's not though. <laughs> I find the spark plugs usually pretty good, but I know a lot of people are uh, pretty nuts about changing spark plugs and making sure those are new but uh yeah all right into another day we'll mess with this for now it's gonna sit like this it's the next morning and i removed this valve cover inspected that rubber gasket it's in perfect shape and i just put um, permatex all in the groove in there and smushed it in so you can probably see it, it's like squeezed out of there. I put some Permatex around the screws that hold that together and I'll let that cure for a couple hours. It's 90 minute Permatex and uh, we'll see how that does. But just looking the tractor over because I'm just trying to think about what comes next. Because if I get this motor running, 
then I'm going to probably try to power wash the whole thing and then take it all apart, take everything apart, take the motor off, take all the fenders off and all that. But I'm looking at the stickers and the decals. Now I have one of these stickers because I like those. I put those on a lot of machines. Um, but some of these things are in such great shape and it looks to me like I could peel some of these off <laughs> and maybe save them. Like, look at that. I mean, this tractor was not abused at all. And it wasn't left outside. So, like, that decal is good. Um, what else was I looking at? Look at this one. When do you see this? Fully intact. I could probably peel this off right now. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna be a little more careful with that, but that's pretty cool. Uh, there's there's a nice Craftsman logo on the back, um, and I, I showed you before how someone had a sticker over that. I found that sticker. I found the Craftsman sticker, so I bought that. A little premature because I didn't even have the engine running yet, <laughs> but. I bought the sticker for that, so that one's fine. I can destroy that one, wire wheel it off. But yeah, I might try to save some of these. See what I can come up with. Check it out. These are the decals that came off. So this one, I never really looked too closely at this one, have you guys? The Outdoor Power Equipment Institute's model certified by this independent laboratory. Pretty cool. This, this one came right off. And uh, I had already purchased a new one, but we'll see. Maybe that will clean up nice, or I'll just use that one. This one, perfect. And then same with this one. And this one's even still sticky. This is the caution stuff. And then here's the new Craftsman sticker that will be, um, you know, translucent. So that should stick on there and just be red letters, none of the white stuff with the grid. But, uh... Yeah, pretty sweet. It's been several hours, and this is for the most part all set up. It takes way longer than 90 minutes, like it says, but I'm sure like their point is 90 minutes and the Permatex can kind of handle it, but it just doesn't feel like it's really set up until you wait several hours. But let's give this a crank, see what happens. Choke. Off choke.
well, that was pretty weird but uh it did even out a little bit once a load hit it and then it just kind of you know got i don't know got too rich not really sure i back that off where i think it should be maybe it picked up some bad fuel too try again I like that bottom screw in all the way. Kind of loses it there. Boy, pretty weird stuff. <laughs> So some of the safeties work. This safety works. If I lift that up and if I'm not on the machine, it wants to cut off. Seemed like the seat safety worked, but could be wrong. Yeah, it's not leaking oil, so we fixed that problem. Uh, and it's not leaking from the carb anymore either. We put Permatex on, on both of these gaskets. But that carb is not, uh, well, see there's this little, like, you could let fuel out of the carb like that. And that thing is just notorious for uh, wanting to leak. So, so it does leak a little bit out of that thing, but it's supposed to, it's supposed to let fuel out, but not supposed to drip. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. 
surges really bad. But it's probably worth investing into a new carb, especially since I figured out the oil drip problem. See, if it kept dripping oil like that, I uh, would have then have had to think about really replacing this engine. I know, I could like get another seal, but like, I'm not too crazy about this engine to begin with. But if I can reasonably get it to power this machine, it's the original engine, I'll do it. Yeah, see how this thing drips? But like, you just gotta toy with it a little bit. <laughs> All right, keep messing around with it. It's a couple days later. Now, last time I drove this thing, I was able to dial in that carburetor a little bit. Still surges pretty bad. Uh, definitely not how I want to sell it. So uh, I went ahead and bought the only carburetor I could find for this thing on eBay, which was about a $70 carburetor it looks like it's OEM so that's pretty cool um, so that might arrive today but I think what I'm gonna do right now is get this mowing deck off a couple of reasons for that one I do want to restore it um, but I'm sort of waiting to do all this restoration until I can get this engine running right but um, when I parked this thing after my last test ride I broke the drive belt right as I pulled in here <laughs> It was actually right on the ramp and the belt snapped so I might go out to tractor supply and find a half inch by 90 belt uh, that's a pretty easy belt to find right on the shelves so we'll see if I can do that today uh, hopefully that carburetor arrives today but yeah in the meantime let's get this deck off the machine well everything's good and crusty under here looks like it's gonna be uh, hard to remove everything but Seems like we have two pins here that are attached to the lever that raises and lowers the height of the deck. We have a pretty interesting setup here. So you have a big pin and a cotter pin on the other side. And this thing does not look like it wants to budge, so I'm probably going to have to Hit that out with a hammer. Or maybe I could try to do the front because there's another pin there. Maybe that's the way to go. I actually like that. That really guards the pulley. And a lot of people hit rocks and stuff with the newer mowers, but this is like a nice guard against that, which would save your engine. You know, if you knock into something, you bend the shaft. The engine, that's a surefire way to ruin your machine. But it's a pretty good setup under here. All right, let's see if we can get all this rust knocked loose and get this thing off. just got one of these rear hangers off and uh, there was no nut on the end of this threaded rod that raises and lowers the deck this was just stuck in there with a pin I mean it kind of seems like maybe that's to help it float because it could just kind of move but it also seems like there should be a nut I don't know a little strange I have everything disconnected. Got the tractor jacked up a little bit. Let's see if that helps with clearance. Yeah. All right, we're coming out. Right, let's take a look at this deck here. Almost got it free, just sort of bound up there. Yeah, so there's one additional mid-mount bracket 
that looks like it controls um, the blade engagement which was all seized up so my WD-40 right here but yeah you could tell this whole this thing just needs needs a lot of love <laughs> but unbelievable shape I mean hopefully you can recognize that like the stickers I can't believe how the stickers are still on this thing Let's flip it over. Really good shape. Really good blades. <laughs> Typical old sounds, right? I mean, yeah, that's not... That's not that bad. I know, like, I could change it, but change the bearings, but that's pretty good. This one's got the brake on it. Seems like it might be a little bent. Anyway, that's in really nice shape. Okay, glad we got that deck off. Now we can start looking at what this drive belt looks like. Let's see if we can get the drive belt removed. I might turn this tractor around and then use the chain hoist to get it up. The floor jack only does so much. Hopefully the poor lighting isn't too distracting, but we've got a really rainy day here. We're locked in the shed, but there you go. Here's this dry rotted belt that just snapped. It honestly looked like it was in perfect condition. But, you know, I'm going to have to replace the mowing belt too. About as easy as it gets, huh? To uninstall. Nice. I mean, how good does everything look under here? No, it, does, it barely even looks like it was ever leaking any oil. I can't believe this thing. I know it's surface rusted to no end but we're really in great shape wow there's even like a fan I don't know if you can see the fins see that that's pretty interesting stuff little seeping going on on top of the trans but just on top <laughs> okay good so maybe I'll go out to tractor supply and get that belt I've got you backed up to super view so hopefully you can see everything that's going on under here but the um, belt stash proved to be useful again I found a belt that appears to be 90 inches and we're going to try to get this thing on the machine. I'm going to try to do it without removing the engine pulley as, as always, <laughs> if you can. So we'll see how I do here. What I'm going to try to do is get it the belt over the engine pulley and then over the trans pulley. And then I'll worry about these mid tensioners. Might need to remove this belt guide. Wonder if there's a nut on the other side of that. There's definitely a nut. I don't know if it's welded to the frame. Let's try again. Yeah. <laughs> um, looks like it's in a kind of hard spot to remove uh, never mind actually it is quite easy to get back here check this out look at this access panel look at that then you can get to the solenoid fuse look at the steering column right there 
and here's the the nut that I'm talking about. So should be able to get that off. Okay, got this belt guide off without much of a fight. Now I can get that around uh, the small pulley coming off the engine. All right, just looking at the belt diagram now. So this is the clutching idler. It goes around this side. Well, actually, you know what I said I was gonna do? I was gonna do the rear so I have plenty of slack. So let's try to get, try to get it on the, uh, the transport. couldn't have gone any better. Okay, so that's on. <laughs> All right, now we're on to the clutching idler. Goes around that way and there. Uh, that appears to be it. So, yep, I'm gonna release the, the brake. I have the brake on. That's gonna swing this almost all the way to the frame wall and that should hopefully apply the tension that we need just double checking everything and if all that looks good then I'll put this belt guide back on all right let me try to reach around here and release the brake all right you're getting a first look at it how's that look I think that's pretty good and as you can see there's plenty of tension this could swing another two inches that way so that's got it's spring loaded so that just keeps uh, pressure on there I might just hit that with some WD-40 make sure everything's moving pretty good but I think we got it we might as well give this a try see if it'll start and drive and I'll give you guys a chance to hear how it's surging See if I can address that. All right, let's try this again. I got the belt put back on. Not really sure what happened there, but it definitely fell off the drive pulley from the edges. So I don't know. Let's give it another shot. Well guys, you actually caught it. That's the best it's ever run. Of course, I'm not driving it around. Um, not sure why it's running halfway decent right now. Full throttle sounds like 90%, you know? That really sounds great. There's a little, every once in a while, there's a little like, well, well, you know, blip to the how it's running, but 
But there you, you could hear idle was surging. That's kind of funny because I don't think it was, it was almost the other way around before. And I did nothing. I just let it sit for several days since the last time I messed with it. Yeah, but I have a, a new carburetor coming. <laughs> it's almost making me wish I didn't buy it, but I guess it won't hurt to throw it on, right? And then maybe that will clean up the idle too. But, uh, drive belt works again. And the uh, engine is running halfway decent. Well, the carburetor arrived. Uh, I, on here somewhere it says it's made in the USA. Right there on the choke plate. It doesn't feel all that sturdy, but these carburetors never do. This is what it is on eBay. $67.99 <laughs> Normally we're used to getting replacement carburetors for like $15, but So we got the drive belt on here and the carburetor is running halfway decent right now, but uh, Might as well try a brand new one see if it makes a difference So let's get it installed Okay, the new carb is installed. Got a new gasket here. I haven't touched any of the fuel screws on this carburetor, so we're just gonna see how it runs as it came out of the box. Let's see what happens here. Say, I guess that was worth it, right? I right, run perfectly at full RPM and it ran perfectly at idle. And I think I could probably adjust the throttle cable to get idle down a little bit more. I actually backed off all the way on the idle set screw here and it, it seemed like it could come down more. So I think this is just set. Here, here's the throttle cable. So might mess with that, but I'm not going to touch anything else really because that ran perfectly. I'll leave it open like this to see if it leaks anywhere, but this is great news. So if we have a reliably running engine, what that means is we're going to start taking all this stuff apart, including trying to take the engine off the machine as well. So we could really get into the frame here 
sand everything down or at least you know wire wheel everything down it be really fun to get into this stuff and uh, now I guess I could show you so I got some help from mr. Tecumseh if you know him on Instagram and YouTube and he said this is the paint you want so hopefully that will be a really nice uh, paint for for all this metal and you know it doesn't even need to be a perfect touch-up paint because I'm just gonna everything gray here or silver is gonna get repainted so I'll just paint everything over all right sweet I'm excited this is uh, turning into a cool project get that pulley off that seized on there pretty good um, but I got all the bolts off the engine disconnected the starter fuel line throttle cable all that good stuff um, I'm hoping that I can just oh and I disconnected the belt I'm hoping that I can just pull this whole thing out pulley included it looks like there's enough room on the frame so I'm gonna give this a try yes sir and that, friends, is fantastic news. I don't even have to work on that pulley. I can just leave that thing seized. <laughs> I really hate working on them like that, heating them up, bashing them. I, you know, I'm just, I don't have good luck with that. I'm gonna break something. Now, so to me, this is much better. Here's the engine just sitting right on the pulley. All is well. All right, I'm just going to keep dismantling as much as I can. We'll see how far I can get. take too long uh, it's definitely a lot more intricate than the newer machines to get all these fenders off and everything but this is probably stripped down enough for what I need to do I don't think I'm gonna go any further than this necessarily so you know the idea with the frame is just clean that up best as possible you know try to uh, make it look like it's rusty there and then paint her black I'm um, going to pop the wheels off and take a look at the rims to see what I want, might want to do with the rims. They look to be in really pretty good shape, but they definitely have some rust and pitting and, you know, it would look a lot nicer if we painted them. So, you know, what color are we going to do? I don't know. Uh, should we do white? 
I mean, originally they're gray, but they're a darker gray, so I could just choose some darker gray that I might have up there in the paint collection. And I showed you these already, but, uh, you know, or something like this, maybe that would be good for the rims. A couple different gray things. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll probably do gray, though, I think just to keep it close to as original as possible. Okay, we're in a really good spot. I'm probably going to stop here for the day, just clean up the tools, and then we'll uh, start chipping away at this. Finally, a sunny afternoon after work. I can actually get something done. I'm going to give this a quick power wash. And not much oil anywhere it's actually surprisingly very clean but needs to be power washed for sure and we'll get a good idea what some of the rims look like we'll get it cleaned up all right all washed up we're gonna let that dry a bit um, I'll probably get to painting that another day but for starters I'm gonna grind this down and do a little bit of test paint. I'm gonna use this abrasive wheel. Worked pretty well for me in the past, so let me set you up and we'll see how this foot tread comes out. does a really nice job you can see it takes down just to bare metal pretty quick I don't have too much experience with that abrasive wheel but I'm starting to like it, it doesn't throw little bits of wires at you too like the cheap wire wheels do so that's kind of nice yeah this is the outside edge that will be visible from the outside so I'm just gonna hit that one more time I'll do a little of the underside too. All right, we're back behind the shed. I'm under the canopy. It's orange, so everything gets tinted orange. Kind of looks funny on the videos, but it works okay. All right, so we're going to give this a first little coat with this brilliant metal finish. What's It's just called Rust-Oleum Metallic. It's a silver metallic. Let's see what it looks like. Wow. I like it. That's a pretty nice color. I think that's going to look great. It's probably going to brighten up a lot as it dries. You can see like a dark spot there. You can see how much darker that looks. So it seems like it uh, lightens up as it goes. Here we go. We got two making steady progress. You know, I'm probably not going to film every step of the way in restoring. Kind of just fun to see big moments. <laughs> Probably let that set for a day. You know, tomorrow after work, flip them over, do the other side. Yeah, it's a slow process, but just got to keep chipping away at it. And then, you know, once you have it done, it's done. So these are 50% done. <laughs> well, 
example, I did want to show some of this stuff. So, super crusty fender. I'm going to grind it down. I'm going to take off this sticker because I have a replacement. Just got to watch out for that when I paint and when I grind. Got to focus right here on that side. I think this is going to take off all the paint, which is probably fine. I think what I might want to do is prime this. If I really get it with all the paint off, I might prime it. You know what? I might take this stick. I might take this off because of all this paint, everything else is peeled right off this thing. What do you think the chances are? I guess I'm going for it, huh? Didn't rip, that was just the paint. I think we're good. Sorry, I was blocking your view. Oh yeah. Okay, now we can go bananas grinding this thing and painting it. Look at that. Just gotta find a way to stick that back on. get this cleaned up and ground down today I just took the belt off of it and you know I just got this to come loose it needs a lot of work still it needs lubrication but at least I know that, that there's nothing broken there we're gonna use the wire wheel on this one I'm gonna need to get into all these crannies and that abrasive wheel it's pretty much shot at this point after doing the fender but it doesn't really get into the cracks well, or the creases. Alright, one last look at it before it starts improving. We have the underside of the deck painted with some flat black. And then I'm working on some of the panels too. So these just got a coat of semi-gloss and after a while I'll flip them over and get the other side. This part of the process might bother some people. I am not planning on redoing any of this white lettering. You can see it's too far gone to you know th this whole dash needs to be restored it's so crusty and there's nothing I'm gonna be able to do to save any of that so I could redraw it but I'm not going to do that um, I find that it looks really good if you can redraw it all or it looks really good if you just paint the whole thing black and I know you don't have like the instructions but you know everyone knows how to operate a throttle light switch clutch that might be the most tricky thing but like you show someone once and they got it uh, this thing wasn't planning on staying so i think that's the one sticker i couldn't save but yeah i'm gonna grind this down i'm just gonna paint it black it's gonna look awesome and i'm not gonna worry about the letters just to let you know Thank <laughs> you. 
fender is all primed and dried and I did the mowing deck too just got it up out of the way over here I'm gonna hit this with its first coat of metallic and that might be all I'm gonna do today let's do this I might try to hit the underside of all those panels with another with their first coat of black too so those panels would basically be done but yeah this uh, this came out really good came out really good and I'm glad I ground this down as much as I did because now with the light color on it you can see a lot more imperfections than just with the primer like you can see here but came out pretty good well the deck has two coats on it now and that's you know wet as can be but that's gonna look great I did uh, go out and purchase a replacement deck belt for it, so that will get a new belt. Haven't done anything with the frame yet. But the engine cover has probably three coats of red on it. And it's just the, the seat springs. And the main fender, rear fender, has two coats on the top and just one on the bottom. And this is setting up drying. And a bug is trying to land in it. But yeah, I think this is going to come out pretty good. I haven't ever used this before, but this is a, a clear gloss enamel, like a clear coat. Um, and I just did a little bit there. Looks really good. It kind of comes out almost like glue. It's you know supposed to seal it. And protect the paint. First time ever using it, but I think you know I think it's a good idea. It's kind of what you would do if you had a legitimate paint job, right? You'd put a clear coat on it. Well, that's sort of what this is. So not that I'm trying to go legit, <laughs> but uh, it'll certainly protect the paint job from scrapes.
frame is looking pretty good. I would say I painted it by hand, but then I went back over and hit it with some spray in a few spots. The goal is going to be to eventually get this back in the shed, lift it up with the chain hoist, and get the underside of this too. Uh, and then we got to take the tires off and paint the rims. Let me show you the hood. It's a little dark in the shed. One of my fluorescent lights is out, but here's how the hood is shaping up. It's wet right now. I just finished a second coat. But I'm loving especially the top of this since I ground it down to bare metal. It's it's almost perfectly smooth. Yeah, it's gonna turn out great. Engine cover, all finished. Mowing deck. Pretty much all finished, even some stickers are on it. And I've been doing the clear coat over top of the stickers to try to protect them. There's a new belt. There's the old belt. We're making good progress. Came out pretty good. Right, I got the rear fender here. I actually painted this metallic once more and then did a bunch more clear coats on it and it's really looking fantastic. So it's time I think for the decal. This is gonna go about there. And I don't really know what I'm doing. So Let's see how this goes. First, I'm going to peel this. All right, so. Now you can see the grid is still on there, but it's that's not going to be on there once I peel this off. So that's just to help get things lined up. Ah! <laughs> that's help, supposed to help get things lined up. All right, I almost stuck it on prematurely. All right, we're, this is just like a guess here. All right, we're going for it. That looks good to me. Spend a little time just kind of going over the letters, making sure they're really going to stick. And then we'll peel the corner of the, the clear plastic and all that should be left are these red letters. Did that go on straight? I think it did. So I used the back end of a razor blade just to smooth everything out. I think it came out pretty good. All right, moment of truth. Oh yeah, Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way for you guys. Ooh, it's wanting to peel up a little bit.
right. That's perfect. And then this will get a clear coat too, just to keep all that on there. I spared you some really boring content of me using a bunch of masking tape and some plastic. <laughs> but we got these wheels looking awesome. So I used this Rust-Oleum High Performance Enamel and uh, there's still a bit left in there. And I did, I don't know, probably four coats on each side. It took the better part of a week. You just every day coming home from work, just spray these, let them dry, flip them over, spray them again. But uh, having rims that look like this really make a difference. It makes the tractor look brand new. So these, I can't believe how good these original tires are. Uh, they're all holding air. One, this one here doesn't. Or after a while, it leaks out, but I'll put some ATF in there and that should fix it. Mounted the wheels yesterday, and today is Saturday. It's going to be raining, and I think I prepped myself all week to get everything I need inside the shed today. Today might be the day that I can mostly finish this project. I'm hoping to reassemble just about everything. Um, I have, again, most of the day today, but I do have my kids to watch. <laughs> so we'll see how far I get. But I think at least if I don't finish today, you know, I should be able to get this done uh, pretty soon. So... Let's get going. Hopefully the next thing you see is a finished or like 95% finished project. I'm excited here. Let's get to work.
What do you think? I love it. I think it came out great. This has been just over six weeks of work on this. You know, not that I do this full time. This is just a hobby for me. So six weeks, you know, working on it on the weekends and for about an hour and a half or an hour after work every day, as much as I can. I wish I could do this full time, but you know, gotta have a real job. <laughs> So the engine's been fully serviced with new oil, spark plug, air filter, fuel filter shut off, new belt on the mowing deck, sharpened blades, you know, just like the regular full service, but I'm going to advertise this for sale, obviously, and list it as a restoration project. You know, hopefully someone who's interested in that sort of thing will buy this. Otherwise, you're just selling a 1991 Craftsman. You know, that might not be too interesting to anybody. But I think this is a pretty interesting mower. Thank you all for watching this far. I know this was a long video, but I hope you can appreciate the style I'm trying to go for here. A start to finish restoration. I like the YouTube videos that do part one, part two, but nothing seems as satisfying as watching one video that goes from start to finish. You get to see it as a rust bucket, and then the final product is there at the end of the video. So, real proud of this one. I think it came out great. I do want to give a couple shout outs. A uh, special thank you to Mr. Decumsa. He's on Instagram and YouTube. His name is Doug. Doug helped me out a lot with the carburetor for this engine and gave me, uh, pointed me in the right direction with the paint color, the metallic from Rust-Oleum. Uh, big thanks to Doug for helping me get the engine running and then also making this look as good as it does. And again, that style in which I'm trying to go for start to finish, I really enjoy Andrew Camerata's videos and all of his videos are like that. They're longer but it's the complete process no matter how long it takes all in one video start to finish one more look all right well my name is kyle this is kyle by the creek thanks for everyone for viewing the videos please like and subscribe it'll help my channel grow looking to get more followers and uh, grow the channel and i have i don't know if you can see in the background there plenty of tractors to keep working on. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I never showed you guys that this thing can mow grass. You ready?